tapping into InDesign, which is kind of the culminating software that allows you to combine photos from Photoshop and art from Illustrator and put them together in format of a flyer or a brochure or a magazine or a poster or really anything that you want to build. So this is going to be a really basic, super, super basic understanding to get you started in uh, InDesign. We're going to build this document exactly right here, and that's going to be your assignment, is to build this document as close as you possibly can to the way it looks just like this. Okay? So the first thing we want to do is when we start and you launch InDesign, you're going to create a new document. And that new document is always going to be print. We want to select print. We want to make sure that we have a letter size document. And we look over to this side and we want inches, not points. We're going to make orientation. We want it to be normal portrait. And we only need one page, but we're going to leave the facing pages on for now. Columns. We're going to work with a three column because this document in the background is a three column document. So we're going to bump this up to two, three columns. Margins are a half inch. Don't worry about your bleeding slug and say create. And then when you do that, there you are. So there's your document. You have your margins, half inch on the side. Your margin is this magenta line that goes all the way around the outside of the document, right around the edge. That's the area where it tells you, hey, you're getting close to the edge of the paper, don't get any closer. So it allows you to, it helps you line everything up. These columns that we put in here, these three columns, they're not really columns. I mean, you can't put anything there. They're actually guides. They're guides to indicate where the columns are going to be. And that helps you in your grid layout and laying these out so that everything snaps together and looks good. Okay. So uh, at this time, I want to tell you the thing. Uh, I'm gonna, let me, let's take a look at the uh, the uh, example document. Okay, the thing with InDesign that makes it unique is InDesign deals with frames. Everything works with a frame. So you 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 build a frame and then you put a picture in it. You build a frame and then you put text in it. You build a frame and you put an illustration in it. So everything in InDesign works with frames. You build a frame and put objects in that frame. Everything from copy to a background color to a photograph or an illustration. All right. So with that said, let's go back to our fresh document right here. It doesn't really matter if you want to start with the words or the pictures. I tend to start with the pictures. It really doesn't matter. So to start with pictures, what we're going to do is first, there's a couple different ways to put pictures down. You're going to place it, but there's a couple, couple different ways to place it. So the first way is to just say place with no selection at all on the page, which is command D. Why is it command D? I don't know. It just is. So command D and it says, oh, you want to place something. Well, what do you want to place? So you're going to go to your file, you're going to go to the folder that you made, and we named it Italian Page, and you're going to put all those three photos, the downloads, in that page, or I'm sorry, in that folder. So you can go find the first one, Italian Favorites, and you say Open, and now I get the gun. You can see I get the, the placement gun, which has a little image on there, the picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go all the way over here to this left edge, this left margin. And I'm going to click and hold, and I'm going to drag a frame across this lane, across this column, through the gutter, across next, through it, all the way until I hit that other side, the other margin. Then I let go. And what the computer does is it builds a frame and places the image inside of it for me. So at this time, I want to just kind of show you. We talk about you have a frame and you have pictures. So we have the picture frame 
and then we have the picture that's inside the frame. Okay? They can both move independently with each other. So if I click on this picture, and if I start to move it, I'm moving the frame and the picture together. You'll notice as I go over the picture with my mouse, a little circle pops up in the middle of the photograph. That is a hole through the frame to the picture. It's like if you cut a hole in the glass of a picture frame that you have at the house and you can reach in and touch the picture. Same thing. This allows me to reach through. As you can tell, when I go over that area, it turns to a hand. And now I can click on that and hold. And now as I move around, you can see that the picture frame is not moving, but the picture behind it is. So I, I, I can slide it all the way over here like this. And now I've slid the picture out of that frame, or a majority of it, or I can slide it around to different spots, okay? So that is how you move the picture itself. Again, if I click over here, I'm getting both the frame and the picture. I can also, when I click over here, I can change the size of the frame. Come down to this corner, Grab the corner net handle, and then I can shrink it down if I want. Or click on it again. Click and hold, and it shows me the picture. And I can adjust this to whatever size I need it to be. So you can adjust the picture independently, and you can adjust the frame independently. Or you can move them together. That's up to you. So there's our picture. Let's take a look at how it's cropped, okay? So it cuts it off about right there, and it cuts it off, oh, about right there on the bottom. So I'm gonna come down here and look at the picture, zoom in a little bit. There's a handle right here, a little handle. I'm gonna click on that handle, and I'm gonna hold, and as I begin to drag, it'll show me how I'm cropping the image. Bring it down to about there. That's pretty good. Let's do the top or the bottom that is. Click, bring it up to that sausage and that tomato. About right there, do a command zero so I can see everything. Uh, it looks pretty good. It's cropped, very similar. So the next thing I wanna do, I'm gonna go ahead and put my header in there. Let's put a first piece of copy. So the header says, great Italian recipes, okay? So I'm gonna type the letter T, get the type tool. I'm gonna to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see. I'm gonna come all the way over to this upper left corner, click and drag all the way across to the margin and let go. Great Italian recipes. You guys like Italian food? Yeah. I love Italian food. All right, so I've got that in there. And my copy right now is too small. It's also way over to the left. So I need to highlight it. So I'm going to highlight it. And then I can tell it, well, let's put it on the right. Well, no, I don't like that. That's flush right. I don't like that. I think it needs to be centered. So I'm going to hit the centered. Ah, that's more like it. Visually, with up here at the top, at my kerning, I'm going to change it to optical. That's almost always the better way to view your copy, is optically. And now I need to change the size. The size is up here in my control bar, next to the name of the font. Then we have the size of the font and the size of the letting. Letting deals with the space between the, le the lines of type. So I can either click on this drop down menu and just choose something like 48, not quite big enough, or I can type on the area and just type in oh, 090, 
and say go. That's too big. Or I can also hit the little down and up button right here next to it and make it shrink one step at a time. But that's more for fine tuning. So I'm going to keep chopping it down until it fits from left to right. There we go. It goes all the way across the top of that page. Looks pretty good. Now you can see I've got some extra box hanging down here. One tip for you guys. Always clean up your boxes. The problem is if I grab this picture and I move it up higher... And now let's say I need to get that picture and I click here. I don't have the picture. I have the words. And you're like, coach, how come I can't get the words? It's because you're, or the picture. It's because your box, your text box is so huge. Shrink it up. Doesn't need to be that big. So I grab it in the middle and I slide it up until I don't need it anymore. Right there. Now it's out of the way. Nice and tight. Okay. All right, so next, let's do our body copy. Letter T. Come all the way over here to the left margin. Click, hold, drag all the way across to the right margin and down to the bottom margin and let go. I want to fill it with placeholder text. I'm going to right click or on the Mac, I... Control, hold the control and click over this text box and I say fill with placeholder text. And there you go, Bob's your uncle. So now we have one giant text block, but it needs to be three columns. So I'm going to go up to this top. I'm going to highlight it. And I turned off my hyphenations because that drives me crazy. Okay. And then I'm going to come over here, right here to where it says number of columns. That's the one we want right there. And I click up for two, up for three. And there's my three columns. One, two, three. You do not want to draw three separate text boxes. You want one text box with three columns in it. It lines up all your copy. It lines up all your, your base lines. Everything looks good. Okay, so now we got to put our last two pictures. Our last two pictures. So they are identical in size. And in the left corner, left bottom corner and right bottom corner. Okay, no problem. Now I'm going to show you the two different ways to put place a photo. The first one was do a command D. Go get what you want. I want the meatballs. I zoom in. I click right here on the margin. Click and drag all the way to the gutter. And let go, and there's my photograph. Take it, I'm going to move it down so it sits on the bottom where it's supposed to be. And there we go. Now, these two photos are supposed to be identical in size. Why try to draw another one over there hoping it's the same size? I've got this one. Just use it. So all I have to do is duplicate that one. So if I come over here and I click on it, and I start to move it. I'm going to hold the shift key down so it moves in a straight line. And if I want to duplicate it, what do I hold down? It's the same as it was in Illustrator. What do I hold down? The option key. Now it's copying it. It's making a duplicate. I'm going to slide it over to that corner and let go. And looky there. There's my two photographs. They're both exactly the same size. Coach, that has meatballs in it. You're right. Here's the second way to put photos in. 
I can select a frame or a box. Whoops, moved a little bit. Select a frame or a box that I want. Do a Command D. Tell it what picture I want. And then when I say OK, it places that photo inside the box. That's the second way to do it. They line up just right. Okay. Now I'm going to put some text wrap. See how this text is banging right on top of that picture? It's uncomfortable. We want to have the same amount of space above the picture, between the copy and the picture, as we do between this gutter. So I'm going to do both of them at the same time. Click on this picture. Click on this picture. Hold the shift key. So I get both of them. I'm going to come up to this center right here where it says text wrap. Text wrap around bounding box. Yep, that's what I want. And now it pushes the copy off of the box. Just like that. Now the last couple things we have is put that header in there, subhead, get the type tool, click on the margin, go all the way over to the gutter, second gutter, a tour of Italy, everyone will enjoy. Highlight it, command shift alligator right. The greater than, less than, pump it all the way up to the size that I want. Move it down just a little bit. And the last one is we need to make a drop cap. So to make a drop cap, let me zoom in. It's pretty easy. I don't like the letter I. I'm going to make an E as a drop cap. So here's all we do. Highlight the letter that you want to make a drop cap. Go up to the top. Go over to this icon. Drop cap number of lines. One, two, three. Made a three line drop cap right there. Command zero. There it is. Let's look at that one. And look, let's look at that one. Pretty darn close. That right there, my friends, is your finished product. Basic header, subhead, putting copy down, putting pictures down, a little bit of text wrap, and a drop cap. We're going to add pages later and add effects and different... Um, things I want you to do. But for now, just simply focus on this right here, what I just showed you. Okay?